What we were trying to do was to move individuals from a zone of defiance into a zone of cooperation. And then the intelligence gathering began. Under CIA supervision, detainees would be slapped and grabbed, deprived of sleep, forced onto liquid diets, even confined in a coffin-like box with live insects. There was nudity, uh, there was water dousing, cramped confinement, stress positions. And then there is the infamous technique known as waterboarding. The body responds as if the body thinks it's drowning. Am I happy we had to do it? Of course not. The president looked at the techniques and decided he was going to take two techniques off the table himself. I do not know, or nor do I recall, what techniques were taken off the table. But there are some inside the CIA who have grave doubts. There were a number of those techniques that I personally uh, felt were uh, inappropriate, not necessary beyond the pale. I was a senior CIA officer at the time, and I had expressed my, my discomfort and my, um, my concerns about uh, these techniques, believing that they were going to um, come back to haunt us, the CIA. I did that with individuals, colleagues at the agency. Did he ever come and complain to you about the enhanced interrogation techniques? No. He never came to you and said, hey, you know what, George, I think this is wrong? No. He never did? No. Early on in the program, there were terrible mistakes made and two people did die, and it's regrettable. One detainee, severely injured during his capture, is left untreated during a CIA interrogation at an Iraqi prison and dies. Another is shackled half naked on a cold floor at a CIA black site in Afghanistan. He is found dead of hypothermia. No charges are ever brought against the officers involved. It's awful that those things happen. What happened? But it happens, you know? I mean, you know, we were at war. The fog of war. <laughs>